So, hello internet, hello YouTube, from, from the engineering cave, slash electronic cave, slash, well, hobby stuff, cave. What I have here on my table is an HP Z420 workstation, and this is an old workhorse, my girlfriend uses this. To play games and for fun. Um, what do we have here is a four core Xeon processor around 3.3 gigahertz and we wanted some more power out of this so I got my hands on an E5 2667 version 2 processor that's an 8 core with 14 threads 25 megs of cache but there's a problem the motherboard of this freaking thing is version 1 and the BIOS microcode is too old and there's a slight hiccup with that you can't update it via the normal BIOS procedures because it's on the secured part of the BIOS and it's not getting written with the normal BIOS upgrade so what I did here next to the BIOS chip there's a JTAG port 7 pins going directly to the BIOS chip that's an emergency ROM rescue port or something 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 like that what the HP uses it for so I made made this SOAC16 adapter and I soldered some wires on it So I can plug that Micro Pro Epromer directly to the motherboard and we'll see what happens. I hope we can download the old BIOS and see what's in it. Update the microcode, flash it back and get the get the newer processor running on this rig. At least and that's what the internet tells me that's possible but yeah this is something i wanted to share it's going to be interesting if that that works and if the 3.3 volt line on the micro pro is strong enough to power up some of the board while it's programming the bios at first i'm just going to read it and check the bios what what's inside and we'll continue this video when we when we get everything set up so first read unsuccessful we were missing write protect and hold lines from the chip those are not on the heater you need 3.3 volts on those lines so soldered on a couple of lines and we'll test again so that kind of escalated we have some heat shields and we have the bios chip it didn't want to read in circuit so we have a hot air station some flux and here we go so we'll continue this i'll solder it onto the adapter and we'll see if it wants to read then so now we got the chip on the adapter board and we're gonna slap it on the programmer and see if it wants to read and what do you know off off circuit it is reading it i did okay and it's reading so interesting there's a heater, but with this programmer 
the signal's too weak, it doesn't work. Okay, could have used Raspberry Pi like everyone else, but don't have the Pi, don't have the clip. It's on the way, so I wanted to try that. It didn't work, oh, big deal. Now it's on there, and then we're gonna see what's what, and we're gonna continue. So we got to this point. The chip is there, it's been red, and the original is on the left. Secure HP signature, the version is J61, version 1.02. Although the original BIOS version is point, uh, uh, 3.92, it's very much near BIOS. But the secure boot block is version 1.02 as the newer boot block version starts from 3.85 and that'll upgrade the microcodes also and you get very much more processor processors that you can use on your board there's nothing nothing else that's changed on the board except the boot block Nice going HP. Hmm. I feel like somebody's sticking it up to us little people or bigger people because these are corporate machines. But yeah. I'll edit the bias and then I'm going to flush it back. Uh, the way this is why I don't just put a new BIOS there, because there are the MAC addresses and everything are machine specific and I need the original readout and just just edit the microcodes there and the secure boot block so that we can use the newer microcodes but yeah this is just hex editing from one sector to another uh, I'm not going to film it because I want to concentrate on doing this and yeah We'll continue this when I got the got the bias edited and make some something of it. So now we have the device ready and we have the new file on order and we press program. The ID is if okay and starts erasing. Ooh, this is interesting. <laughs> Software data protection disabled, okay. So now to write. Write the apron and it'll take some minutes and we'll continue when we get the chip right and verify the right reading it out and checking it matches the Modified bias, and if everything's good, we're gonna solder the chip back onto the motherboard and see what what. So, chip is programmed with the modified, and I read it back what I wrote into the chip, and there's there's no difference into the, between the modified and the read back. So, the writing is okay. And now we're going to solder it back to the machine, this guy here, and we'll see what happens. Now the chip is off from the adapter, waiting there to cool down. Then I'm going to prepare the pads in there, wick some of the solder, solder out. That's unleaded solder, it's too hard and takes forever to ever to heat up. So. I'm going to do that and then we're going to we're going to grill that back in. And now we have the BIOS chip in place again. Solder on there. And I verified the pins with the JTAC heater. All the connections that are supposed to be there are there and no short circuits. So 
gonna assemble it and test and we see what happens first i'm gonna test with the original processor because i want to see it boots up and everything's okay i want to see the bios the microcode has changed the boot block and then we're gonna change the processor and see how it goes and we have a winner the boot block date is 0306-2013 Yay! And here we see we have E5-1620 in the machine at the moment so kind of turn it off, change the CPU and see if she boots up So, moment of truth We have the new CPU in place Let's hit the start button and hit F10. Let's see if she boots. Oh yeah, she booted. And let's see what we got here. And we have Intel Xeon E5 2667 version 2. So now the motherboard accepts version 2 processors. Let's wait. Wait a moment. Boot again. Let it go into Windows. Oh yeah, very happy. Really happy. Yep. So finally Windows got everything updated. And yeah, here we have Intel Xeon CPU 2667 version 2. Now running at running at 3.3 gigahertz as it's not on turbo mode it's just idle in but yeah happy with that now the ivy bridge processors work on this yeah i know it's an old old one but it's still a good processor and with a good graphics card it can it can run all the games all the games my girlfriend wants to play and some of the some of the ones I like to play, I don't play that much, but yeah. If you have any questions or comments about the upgrade, please share the video if you liked it, subscribe if you're new, and, and consider joining me on Patreon if you like this kind of content, would be, would be nice. But yeah, you all stay safe. Have a nice day. Bye.